Okay, on learning English with Lily today, it's the second part of my pronunciation class on the most common sound in the English language, schwa, which is pronounced like this. Uh. If you haven't seen part one, then I suggest you check that out first, okay? Otherwise, you might get a little bit confused. In the last class, we looked at how any vowel, so A, E, I, O, or U, can be pronounced as a schwa. Today I'm going to look at how the schwa sound can be represented by the letter Y, or even uh, a few vowels, or even vowels and consonants. And I'll also look at schwas within connected speech. Let's start with the letter Y, which is considered a vowel and a consonant, depending on the word. For example, in the word yellow, it's a consonant, y. And in the word 20, it's a vowel, e. And when it represents a vowel sound in an unstressed syllable, it can be a schwa. Two examples are vinyl and analysis. In vinyl, the first syllable is stressed, vi, but the second is unstressed, so the y becomes a schwa, no. Vinyl, vinyl. With analysis, the second syllable is stressed, na, but there is a schwa either side, so the a at the beginning, u, uh, uh, na, and then the y afterwards in the third syllable, anal, uh, anal. Uh, so you have analysis, analysis. The schwa sound can also be represented by more than one vowel, for example, color or function. With colour, the first syllable is stressed, k, and the ou in the unstressed second syllable is a schwa, l, colour, colour. In function, the first syllable is also stressed, so we get funk, good syllable, and then the second syllable is unstressed, and therefore the i, o becomes a schwa. Shun, function, function, and a mixture of vowels and consonants can also be a schwa. ER and OR at the end of a word, for example, teacher, actor, funnier, and then you've got words like thorough, which means detailed and careful, and there you have O U G H, which is pronounced as a schwa. I don't think I get it. O-U-G-H is pronounced uh. It doesn't make sense. How many times do I have to tell you? English pronunciation makes no sense. <sighs> Finally, let's focus on connected speech. If we take the conjunction and or the preposition to, for example, we don't hear any schwas, right? We have ah. That's the vowel sound for and or ooh, that's the vowel sound for to. But if we say a sentence that includes those words, schwa's suddenly appear. I invited James and Julia to dinner. You'll notice that and becomes and and to becomes t. This is because these words are unstressed in the sentence, they're not important. Okay, let's finish with a little bit of practice, shall we? Have a look at these sentences, say them out loud, and then tell me where the schwas are. I spoke to my mother three days ago. I spoke to my mother three days ago. Yep, there are three schwas in this sentence. So, two becomes t, and then we have mother and Ago. Okay, one more. Hi everyone, this is the voice of Lily in the future. I need to apologise because I managed to completely miss the second example sentence when I filmed this video. So here it is. Meet me at the station at quarter to two tomorrow. Meet me at the station at quarter to two tomorrow. In this sentence, there are seven schwas in total. We have the 
preposition at twice, which becomes ut in connected speech, then to, which becomes t, and we also have the station, so the schwa is in the second unstressed syllable there, quarter, where the schwa is also in the second unstressed syllable, and tomorrow, where the schwa is in the first unstressed syllable. Notice that to the preposition and to the number are normally homophones, which means they sound the same but are spelt differently. However, they stop being homophones when put into connected speech. This is because the preposition to is not important in the sentence and therefore the word is unstressed and it has a schwa, so t, whereas the number two is important information, essential information probably, and therefore we stress the word to. Okay, t or to. T, to. I want to play two games. Meet me at 10 to 2. By the way, if you want to learn a little bit more about homophones, you can check out a very interesting video that I did a while back. Here it is. Okay, so what have we learnt today? Schwa's are everywhere, and as well as being represented by any vowel, which we learnt about in the first class, they can also be a Y, or a group of vowels, or even vowels and consonants. The key to understanding the schwa sound is stress. Many unstressed syllables in English have this sound, as do joining words in connected speech. For example, at, to, and become at, to, and. I hope you enjoyed the class. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and tune in next week for another equally fascinating session. See you soon.